So what are our next steps here moving forward? Um, I can tell you that every decision that we make about this program as we move forward, and we have Director Malloy come back up here in a little bit, every decision we make here moving forward is going to be geared toward the addicted person's future and not their actions of the past. This, this smart guy here said the best way to predict the future is to create it. And that's, that's what our goal is. That's what our goal is. Director Malloy stated that we are going to be, uh, where we did start the, the, uh, the Project Dawn project, or the Project Dawn um, with the Narcan kits. Our guys hand those out now. So not only are they handing out packets, but they're saying, hey, we're going to be back. Like he said, we're going to be back. We're going to be back to see you. In the meantime, if something happens, here's, a, here's an Arcane kit. The instructions are in there. Um, we get a lot of questions about that from our personnel, too. Are we just enabling here? Are we being part of the problem? That's, I'm, I'm kind of tired of hearing that, but, but it's a valid question. Three years ago, three and a half years ago, I probably would have asked the same question. Are we enabling? If we were just going out and handing out Narcan kits as part of our program, here you go, here's a Narcan kit, hope you make it. I would say absolutely we would be, but that's not what we're doing. We're bridging a gap, right? We're going to come back. So this process starts with the overdose response. We're saying here's a packet. We want you to get connected to resources. We care. We're going to be back. In the meantime, if something, ha if something happens, here you go. Here's an Arcan kit. And then we're showing up. And then we're getting, getting them directly connected to resources for help. And then we're following up with them again. I had a, one more piece on culture change before I turn it over. We had one individual who um, had a significant addiction is issue without going into the details. Um, and the guys were getting pretty tired of responding to him. He would call once every two or three days. I would respond at that point because it was getting that repetitive and the guys really didn't know what to say or do with them anymore. So I would respond. And with this individual, we shouted at each other, we cried together, we laughed. Um, we became pretty connected with him. The guys became pretty connected with him. We got him connected to help. He was clean for eight months. And just here recently, he relapsed. Everybody knows him. The first call that we made on him, I get a phone call. Hey, Chief, do you know we made a call on Ricky? Did you see that? I say, I saw it come across my pager. Well, I just wanted to let you know. So, you know, how are we going to get him help? How are we going to make sure he gets connected with the resources? That's culture change. Three years ago, that wouldn't have happened. Three years ago, we would have turned around, we would have walked out the door, and we would have said, good luck. Right? So culture change. Live it, breathe it. It's your choice whether you make things mandatory or not. Um, we did not, and it was very effective. We wanted them to do it because it was the right thing to do, right thing to do, not because Chief Mueller said they had to do it. Right? All right, thank you. Director. Thank you, Chief. He didn't share. We had a story the other day, Wednesday, from the police side, finishing up the culture change. Police officer stops guy, several warrants, got to go to the JC, the Justice Center, I apologize. But he starts getting in the history, talking to him. Well, it, on the way to the Justice Center, he stops in to our Community Resource Center, our CRC. They're working. He's got to do the, the arrest paperwork anyway, pulls in, brings them in, gets the, gets the work started, gets the introductions made, lays the groundwork for the bridge to treatment while he's doing all his paperwork. Rather than sitting in the car with him in the back seat, he goes to the substation, gets that work done, gets them all connected, lets these folks do their business, gets them back up, puts them back in the car, takes them to the Justice Center. Now he's in the system. Now they're moving forward. Now they're making things happen. The other thing is for me from the, from the police looking at fire is when the medics told me we don't, we have five hospitals that we transport to. Well, we don't take them to all certain hospitals because of the way that the nurses treat them when we come in the door. They roll their eyes. They look at us like, what do you want us to do with it? They're under our care. We know what we're doing. They're safe. We're taking them to a different hospital. 
I looked at him, I said, that's culture change. It takes time, it takes an openness, but it also takes leadership. It takes leadership, and certainly being in this room today means that that's where you're at. We certainly appreciate your time, appreciate your willingness to listen. We hope you decide to come back after the break and, and let Nan explain the more in depth of how this thing really works, but we appreciate your time. We appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today.